Hello there everyone, how's everyone doing out there in YouTube land? It's a bit of an odd intro today from us as I actually recorded this footage for last episode but I couldn't find any way to squeeze it in so here it is starting off this one. Bet you can't even tell that this is a voiceover can you? It's so easy to fool you lot. Maybe I'm not even real and this is just chat AI. Hmm, nobody knows. I'm just kidding. I'm pretty sure I'm real at least. Anyway, we're just going to jump on into this Mind Cells Dimension portal and run around clobbering things on the head for a bit before heading home and getting stuck into some more Spectrum and then upgrade our ME system. I'll see you in a bit. Night vision, please. Yeah, and we're obviously much better equipped this time around. All right, let's see what this place has in store for us. <laughs> That gave us some guts. We already had plenty of them. Spawner Ruin, which I don't think you can destroy. Ooh, Hattori's Katana. Right click to charge 15 second cooldown. I can mess with that. Poor guy. Now I don't really I don't really know what this dimension's for. I've played Mind Cells, it's not an easy game. So far this isn't much of a challenge, so I'm sure it's gonna get harder, I'm sure. Man, those shields are tough. Ooh. grenade throwers. Now follow the maze principle where you stick your hand on the left hand side of the wall and you just follow it around. And yeah if you always kind of follow if you always follow one of the walls you'll <laughs> you won't miss anything. Oh <laughs> we can throw oh my god I don't think we'll be able to just like brute force our way through it. Let's see. Yeah. This stuff, this hard stone, this unminable stuff is kind of all around us on all sides. It's a neat way of keeping you in your lane so you don't go wandering off too far, breaking the rules a little bit. I'll tell you what, these chakrams are really helpful because <laughs> you just toss them and let them bounce around to do their thing. And it doesn't require much input from you. Oh, don't tell me this is the end. It's not the beginning. Insufferable Crypt. That was just level one. Well, let's see where this thing takes us. What do you trigger? Nothing. Oh, it triggers a lift. <laughs> right click to activate. Oh. There are a lot of stinking flies around these corpses. Uh-oh. Okay, worst case scenario, we leg it back here and run away. I don't think I'm ready for a boss fight. Can I take cheap shots? Ah! I have to believe in myself and try and be smart about it. <laughs> no, 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 no. What's it say? Under construction. Okay. Oh! Damn, it's hurting us. Oh, it can get me through that too. Okay, requires constant motion. I honestly don't have faith in myself for this. <laughs> Am I doing good? Am I supposed to fight these things? Yeah, I think so. Yes, okay. I was waiting for it to attack its tentacles. <laughs> if you can just choose to go immune, why don't you just stay freaking immune? That's your own fault.
I think we got it. Conjectified us. Get cured. <laughs> All right. This thing's a licking thing, right? <laughs> All right. Oh no, it has durability. And the curse sword. Wielding this weapon brings a deathly curse upon you. Well, I, I choose to not wield it then. All right, that was sick. That was a lot of fun. Say hello to Marceline the second. The original Marceline is stuck over in our vanilla world. Anyway, she's the rescue kitty. We found her over where those witches' huts are just around the corner. And hopefully she can help us scare off some of those uh, stick bamboo stick creepers, which keep on sneaking up at me and scaring the life out of me. Like, even though we've got the big torch here, I guess because they're, they must be classified as, like, passive. Now, base is kind of becoming infested with them. Anyway, back to Spectrum. Where did we end up last time? Oh, that's right. We've got all these different colors. You'll see we have, what's it, 9, 10, 11 types of pigments. And there's 16 types, at least according to REI. And three of them, the, the two grays and the white, aren't available in survival yet. But that leaves the brown and the black. And hopefully they've actually got a little bit of a, a hypothetical list here. So we're missing the brown and the black. There's this page here about color mixing, which leads you to watch a video, which you can check out for yourself. I watched it. It's pretty interesting. Apparently brown's not actually a color. It's just like a, a merely a washed out version of orange. Oh, this seems to imply that brown is a mixture of magenta, two yellows, and two blacks. And that looks like these things here. So this is blue, magenta, and yellow. So what was it? Two yellows and magenta and two blacks. But we haven't actually got a black dye yet. So I suspect this thing here probably unlocks it. The power of fusion. So that has got to be this fusion shrine here. For the process of creating black shards, you have developed a special construction. You can either click or throw items into a bucket, blah, blah, blah. So according to the book, for the process of creating black shards, You've got to build this fusion shrine, which maybe we can just set up over, over here. So it has this kind of useful visualizing tool. You right click it. So that's how big it is, not the biggest. And then if we bookmark this recipe, we'll be able to, we'll be able to see it while we're in the pedestal. And I'm guessing the order of this matters. Yeah. Run away. Oh, I was also advised uh, to let it to let it rain. So we'll leave this guy up here, but it's not going to be activating our um, our sunflower dropper fusion shrine. All right, and then we just check that count up there at the top, make sure it's going up, so we're placing things in the right spot. And slap. You've designed the structure for the fusion shrine to bundle the magical energies of matter, time, and energy. These powerful bundled energies seem to even have enough power to change the weather. It's a brand new day, and the sun is high, and the birds are singing that you're going to die. So you chuck a sunflower and a bottle of water. Oh, while well, it's still nighttime, let's give that a go. And a bucket of water. Oh, uh, probably a probably a love tap. No. Oh, it doesn't make it day. I'm silly. That just it clears the weather up. So if we take that away and give it this, it'll start raining. <laughs> oh, it's incredible. You're not too pleased, are you? Let's do that again. You, you. Clear sky. All right, so creating onyx shards. To create brown pigment, you need black. You need a way to darken orange. And then it occurred to you, it's so logical when you think about it, the three gems you found correspond to the three basic colors of color theory. These three. I did figure that out. By mixing all three together, you can create a shard that is so dark that it almost looks unreal. 
The creation of this blackest of blacks in the fusion shrine has to be performed in a way that absolutely no unregulated light can pollute the crystal, so midnight on a new moon is best. So on a new moon, something something. On a new moon we give these three things and a lava bucket to the fusion shrine to get onyx shards. Do we still have coffins in this pack? We do have coffins. So it seems like to make any coffin you have to have uh, cypress planks from bewitchment which come from some somewhere. I don't know what biome that's going to be. Uh, coffins are great because it's like the opposite of a bed. It lets you skip the day instead of skip the night. And we can keep on skipping daytimes and I guess also sleeping the night away until we get a new moon phase over here. But while we're waiting for that, let's actually just head off here to a swamp and maybe we can even find cypress there and get this new plant called a toxic reed. This is cypress tree. Cypress leaves but from oh, the biomes you'll go. Wrong kind of cypress, I think, yeah. Oh, this is a good time to show off my... Well, let's head down safely first. This is a good time to show off the truncator, which I made last episode, but didn't get a chance to show off. Oh! Like consider yourself warned, don't use this thing on anything to do with your base. Because I used it quickly on one of the blocks back home and it demolished half of my house. Quixotic reeds. Alright, while we're here we may as well grab may as well grab it all. This is a swamp cypress from Biome Makeover. A cypress from Bewitchment. This is exactly what we need. Try and grab a sapling. And we can just throw that in a hopper botany pot back home. Can we farm this ourselves? No. Oh, that kind of sucks. I thought I could plant it in water. Um, yeah, anyway, I almost forgot. Well, I did actually forget, and now I'm remembering, maybe a little bit too late. Spectrum, spoilers, warnings. Venture no further if you haven't played Spectrum before, because uh, it's kind of fun to figure this stuff out for yourself and not have some, some YouTuber spoil it for you. Uh, Spectrum being so original and all. Our green bed, there's our coffin. Now with this guy, we should be able to skip the day and keep on doing this. I'll have to see what kind of, what the moon looks like and keep on doing this with a, a bed as well to skip the nighttime until we, um, until we can get a new moon and fire this thing off. In there, and I think you mix all three of the colors to get black. Oh, that's a whole stack. Let's, I'd rather fill it up. Not a new moon. So we sleep. And then we sleep the day away. We're going to be really well rested by the end of this episode. That's a new moon. Right? Pretty sure it is. Are you doing anything? There's lots of pretty sparkles here. Oh, the sparkles are just the colors that are, that are on there. No, it wants the shards, not the not the dust. Whoops. I better hurry up before we lose the moon. I'll see you when something exciting happens. Hmm? Something's happening. We have explosions. <laughs> That's fantastic, we got 64 of it. We now have a bunch of recipes and a chapter for, you know what? Bucket of water and a sunflower. That'll clear up this weather. Now it's asking for an upgrade of our, of our this to incorporate onyx. Upgrade your pigment pedestal by using one of your onyx shards to further increase its magical powers. So this. And then love tap. Construct the spectrum temple. One more can't hurt, can it? Upgrade your pedestal using onyx, then construct the spectrum thingy thingy. Oh mama, okay. <laughs> oh boy. So, upgrade time. You guys probably don't need to see this. And there it is, pretty easy. 
uh, actually it took quite a while. These things aren't, you know, it's not so easy to find these blocks. The, um, these ones hiding in here are lamps, which were a little tricky to make. And the other thing we kind of struggled on was these, struggled to kind of find these amethyst chiseled basalt. But if you just look for like spectrum chiseled, that's how you make those. I was a bit cheap. I didn't incorporate any of the onyx into the build. And now I'm starting to regret this. I feel like the, the dark colors should be on top. Hmm. Still doesn't look quite right, but uh, it's functional. <laughs> uh, heavy load. New chapters, uh, fanciful circlet, fabrication chest, liquid chest. All the things, yikes. Ooh wee. Potion workshop. All right, all right, we get it, we get it. Now I can make these trinkets. These basic accessories are used as a base for more advanced trinkets. And to me, that sounds like something for later. I don't know what that does. Increase damage on low HP. All right. And this one does heals your nearby axolotls. So you can make a bit of an axolotl army. It also filters oxygen out of the water and greatly increases underwater maneuverability. That's amazing. So that we could probably use that and replace our... Uh, our Ring of Chore data from Batania. Hmm. All right, I think we're basically done with Spectrum for the day, but it wouldn't be complete until we got our final, our final few saplings. Brown and black. And I can't believe it never dawned on me before, but it looks like we can chuck these saplings in the hopper botany pots, and I'm hoping that it also produces the dye for us. We'll see. Probably not. <laughs> mm. Oh, it does work. Well, this guy can just continue ticking over while I um while we get to work around the base. So a uh, few things quickly. You can see that I've upgraded these two uh, barrels here to the steel variants just to store much, much more. And then I did some bulk processing of processes and stuff and got a whole heap of like Felix crystals and charged crystals and things. These things ought to help us like clear out this today and get some proper AE2 automation up and running. I'm thinking of just kind of working in these two chunks, this one and the next one. But yeah, I just threw down a few more, just a few basic things like macerator and mixer. Yeah, the great thing about MI stuff is it doesn't use power, it uses steam. So this guy here with the eight gray runes around the outside just so happens to be connected to this one here that I put on top of a boiler. So this guy is output into the, to this entangled tank. They've got the same kind of code on here at the top. That's just these rune things here. As long as the two are matching, they're going to share an inventory. So that's providing us steam. We don't have to run a cable all the way over there with the tank can do it for us. Oh, right. Yeah. I also threw in a stack of 64. Let's see. Not even halfway done. I threw in a stack of 64 uh, bronze drills into our steam quarry here, which has been running for quite a while. And let's see what it's produced. Whoa. Yikes. Look at all that delicious iron, redstone, coal, tin. That's beautiful. I think I'll, I'll leave those things there so that we can finish the stack. Now, Someone in the comments was kind enough to point out that I was kind of doing this all wrong. I had the output coming out on a single item hatch and to make it worse, it was actually a bronze item hatch, which if you look down here, bronze item hatch has a single slot, whereas these steel item hatches have two slots. Now, I don't remember if I, if I discussed this in the previous episode, but every cycle, every iteration, we've got a 40% chance we're going to get iron, a, um, an additional 40% chance we're going to get coal, a 2% chance we'll get some ruby. You get the idea, right? But if there's no space in the output hatch to get more than one of them, those items are going to get voided. So we had a single bronze item hatch in there. Maybe iron went there first. So we'd get the iron, but all those other things that had a chance of, of kind of spawning in had no way to output. So I've chucked on two item hatches here. I think that should probably be enough. That way there's a chance for four things to spawn, <laughs> spawn to, to be generated. And then we can just export them in, into the chest. So that's what we've been doing. Uh, also, mea culpa, I was using industrial revolution pipes to transport things around because it takes steel to make these, these item pipes. So we didn't have steel up and running yet. So I used the wrong pipes. 
But now we've got these MI item pipes appropriately connected to our little MI act job of a system. All right, hopefully by the end of the episode, this will be done. And we can see what it takes to fill up a chest. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. First things first, a duck dock. I want to get a couple of these docks, which is just very cheap, just black concrete. And what these allow us to do is put in a dank and then connect it with like a storage bus to the network. Now that's good and all, but when the items are in there, we don't have them in our hand. But if we leave two docks behind with a copy of drops and the blocks sitting in there, like synced to all the ones we carry around with us, we can both have them in our inventory to, you know, place things around in the world, or also more importantly, to pick them up. When we go mining, for instance, now things are just gonna pop right into there, but also sync them up to AE2, so all those kinds of drops and blocks can be part of our part of our crafting network. All right, so we need a fresh tank and sync it to this ID. And also we need to upgrade this gold one to the same tier as the emerald and then sync it to that one. Hmm, easy enough. That's just like this. This one's ID2 and we wanna change this one to also be ID2. From memory, we just typed it in. Two, this frequency is locked. Ah. Copies frequencies to other danks. Only works on the same tier. And how do we use this? Shift right click and then right click. Shift right click. And then right click. That's it. That was very cheap. Bit of paper, some die. I shift right clicked on that dank and then I in my inventory, I right-clicked on it with a piece of paper. All right, time to do the same for our blocks. And this is really not cheap, but it is worth it. Diamonds and crying obsidian, I think. The next tier above this requires bloody nether stars, which we do not have. Shift, right-click on the dank you want to copy its ID. And then with it in your hand, right click on the dank in your inventory to copy it over. And that's one we'll leave behind. Perfect. So not only does it mean that we can carry those items around with us, but it's also gonna save our ME system from being clogged up with tens of thousands of these kinds of blocks unnecessarily. All right, now we need to move these two things because they're kind of directly in the, in the way. <laughs> we already have a storage drive and we've got some spare channels. Now the, pro the problem is these two things are full and I'm not actually sure what happens if you bust it open. I suspect bad things. So let's make a few of these drives, empty one out, move it, see what happens. All right, six of them. And then see, these two things are almost full. What if we replace one of these storage buses with an import bus? to import items into the system. Maybe. Import bus, connect that up. Mm, things are coming in. So freaking slow. Capacity card, accelerate. I think we want capacity and acceleration cards, right? But to do this properly, get yourself a Certus Quartz wrench and illuminated panel and this thing you can kind of click on any any part of the network and it tells you how much power it's using and a bunch of other kind of useful stats. But you can also fill it with cards, which is what I want it for. All right, what if we filled it up with acceleration cards? Okay, hopefully that's bringing things in quick. But you can also store these things now down here, which is literally just the storage for your network tool. Uh, yeah, you can fill this up with cards and then they'll be on display for you down here whenever you're interacting with a, like a storage bus or import bus, whatever. I think as long as it's in your, in your inventory. There it is, cool. And how do you know when this is empty? That's a good question, I don't know. <laughs> now the reason why I'm gonna be, can you please keep it down? All right, it's almost done. <laughs> uh, the reason why I'm just using one case here is because this isn't really bulk storage. I mean, the bulk storage is gonna happen in 
things like the the danks but you know it's feasible that we're going to have like a thousand uh, lapis or you know those kinds of numbers because these guys can only store 63 types of blocks like the thou their 1k me storage cells which means they can store like a thousand or 1024 but only of 63 types and what we want is a large number of types to be available all right this guy is done I've got to assume that's empty. Can you... Well, this is bloody inconvenient. I thought you'd be able to stack them up that way. Uh, what is going on here? Well, there goes that idea of burying them in the wall. Hmm, unfortunately these item vault things weren't the great solution that I was hoping that'd be. But my idea was, if we've just got a whole bunch of these drives here, these one key drives, for things that we're actually going to have a bunch of, you know, there's no point filling up these 63 slots with things like, uh, see those swords there? We've only got one of those chests, one of those sleeping skeletons, and, and those two swords. Just those four alone are taking up four of those 63 types. Like, that's a huge waste of space there. Much better to take out non-stackable items and put them somewhere else. And those that item vault's fantastic because it does just that. It stores non-stackable items. Now, though, oh, seems the only way we could do it would be an item vault with a storage bus. And you can put in like a fuzzy card. But then you'd have to do things like, all right, we want all wooden swords, all stone swords, all gold swords. That's all swords, all types of axes. You know, this kind of gets tedious. We'd have to have a filter set up for basically all of these things, and that's uh, that's too much effort. So I think for the time being, I'll just do things manually. Anyway, that's a problem for another day. So we got storage mostly set up. I just moved all that junk, set it up over here. Hopefully I won't have to, to move it again later. I've got a storage bus on each of these tanks, set to a really high priority. Yeah, things coming into the ME network, we'll try to find a spot in one of the tanks first. If not, it'll put into these drives. Like for instance, uh, we've got 90 packed ice there. We'll just take out some, throw it in through the ME terminal, and you can see it finds its way back here to the tank. So we're not going to clutter this stuff with these high number, high resource blocks. I want to move our controller to over here. I mean, I don't think we're going to build an enormous, huge mega base or anything like that, but this kind of shape for a controller is probably what we'll end up with. I don't think there's any strong reason to do it right now though let's just start off basic each controller looks like it takes 1.5 e all right let's just get a bunch more then we'll get one whole face of the controller so this is going to be the brain of our network okay so this is a little bit tricky i may have bitten off more than i can chew for now and probably for all eternity i reckon this ought to be enough channels I tried a 3x3x3, three by three by three, so effectively a cube, but juggling all these P2Ps and connecting all the cables turned into a real nightmare. But anyway, what we have here is a beautiful shiny multi-block controller where each face of a controller, oh, face, 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 each face carries 32 channels and we've got 8, 16, 12, and another 4 in here, in these four sides. So that's 32, um, 30, 31, because we've actually sacrificed one connector here in order to transfer power kind of to and from. Anyway, 31 faces of a controller, each one carrying 32 channels. That's like, I don't know, just shy of a thousand channels that we have to play with. I'm never going to use that many, don't tell anyone, but this looks cool. And when it's all powered up, it's going to be nice and shiny. I guess I better attempt some kind of explanation of what these P2P tunnels here are. Um, yeah, like I said, 32 channels on each face of the controller, which means each side can have one of these dense cables, which also carries 32 channels, you can see there. Each side can have one of these dense cables coming off, carrying 32 channels in every direction. But just like with computers, how you can encrypt your files to send them over the internet and stuff, you can encrypt those channels onto a single channel, the P2P tunnel. Now all those 32 channels there, they're just gonna take up one of these eight channels. So you can see we put these just regular smart cables connecting up eight P2Ps. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Same for the blue and the, the, the magenta and the red. 
So we can just carry that out in a one 32 channel dense cable. And when we need to, we'll put another P2P tunnel there, link it to one of the faces here, and that'll give us a full 32 channels out, but only cost one channel in our main kind of highway of channels there. I hope that makes sense. Now we're quickly running out of time here, but I really, really want to get some auto crafting up and running before we head off today. So what I've got here is 32 molecular assemblers and 32 pattern providers. Now there's lots of ways that you can do this for max efficiency and things like that, but I think this ought to be good enough. So I'm just alternating the pattern providers and the molecular assemblers all the way up like that. Oh, got four more in my hands. That's better. So in case you don't know, these molecular assemblers are basically like crafting grids. If you provide it with a pattern, just like what we have in our crafting grid, like if you give it two planks, it knows how to make pressure plates. It can pretty much craft anything that you can in a crafting grid, but you got to teach it by giving it patterns. And rather than put the pattern in an individual assembler, that's a, you know, that would lock this one assembler to one recipe. Instead, you put patterns in the pattern providers, and then this one will pass along to any of the neighboring molecular assemblers patterns that you request through your MA system, and these will actually do the craft. So this will provide the recipes, this will do the craft. We've got power to the system now. Let's connect this up to our controller using one of these memory cards. We can give it a channel, like let's for instance give it this one here. You shift right click on that. Now we've copied the frequency for this P2P. Head down into the sewers. Come along here. We're underneath our molecular assembler stuff. It's only the pattern providers that require channels, but molecular assemblers will uh, will transport them through. So just run four cables along. Each will transport eight. Gonna connect it to this one with a P2P. This one is the output. Connect it up now. Yep, output side. Carry channels 32. All right, these are all coming across. Nice. Now let's just see if it says any. No, nope, they're all online. Okay, I completely forgot where I was. <laughs> so, did so much tinkering around. I'm pretty sure this should be good now. I connected it to our, our terminals and our wireless and stuff, and our storage, and it was just it just wasn't working. And I think you need this, or else it can't get power. Is that right? No. Oh. I guess because of whatever we did down there to change it means that power now carries through there. Either way, I threw the memory card that we used to sync up to one of those P2Ps of this one. I just threw the memory card in there so we're not going to lose it. And I'm so happy that we have all this stuff finally synced. That one might be coming an issue. We'll see. So where was I? <laughs> That's right. I was going to suggest we make a few patterns. Test this out. Right, let's make a few basic patterns. Let's craft some patterns with oak. So let's say, hey, what is the recipe for, for oak planks? One oak log equals four oak planks. Let's save that recipe. What else can we make? We can make oak stairs. Let's record that. We can make sticks. And for now, I'm not allowing substitutions. I sh probably should allow substitutions. There's no need to allow fluid substitutions. Let's let's change these ones to allow substitutions. So it doesn't have to be oak log, it can be any kind of wood. And this one, allow substitutions, yep. All right, we've got three recipes now, and these are gonna go into the pattern providers over here. And we access them through a pattern access terminal. I think we should be able to link up our pattern access now to our wireless terminal. And then we should be able to access this block through here. All right, perfect. One little quick adjustment I had to make here. Um, yeah, so it seems we need a controller here to pass channels along and, and do all its magic. And then the only thing that's connecting to here is power, because you see the quartz fiber, the cable there cuts it off. Now, please don't follow me on this. I know this is wrong. Follow one of the many tutorials on YouTube instead, and I will be making tweaks to this, I'm sure. Right, so now we have 32 molecular assemblers in which to put our recipes. So let's say 
Let's put them all here, for instance, like so. In fact, it's slightly faster to split them out, but we won't go into, won't bother explaining why just yet. Now our system knows these recipes, but any computer needs a CPU to actually do the process in itself. It's one more thing to add to the list. Now, instead of the regular CPUs, I was hoping that I'd be able to make something like one megabyte crafting storage, but to make the one megabyte mega storage component, you'll need three 256Ks, which is 964s, which is uh, 27 16Ks, 27, what's that, 81 uh, 4Ks, and that's something like, I don't know, 250-odd 1Ks, times by four again for the, all the redstone you'll need, and yeah, we don't have that much redstone, so that's a dream. Instead, I reckon we could probably make just a handful of these 4K crafting storages. We can make a mega co-processing unit. And then if we put a P2P on top of that, grab a new card that I've prepared, sign that here. And then just tuck it in there for storage for now. Now, a uh, crafting CPU can be as little as a crafting uh, storage. That's all it takes. Now you can see if we wanted to craft it, you know, 10 of those, there is a, a CPU available. But you can also turn it into a multi-block. And the only rule for it to be a multi-block is that it's a cuboid. A cuboid being something with, with six sides. This has more than six sides. So therefore the texture didn't snap. We're gonna chuck a crafting monitor on there as well. That can be our Fact. Let's push it back one. That's now online. While we haven't finished with our crafting arrays yet, we still want to come in here and add a whole bunch of acceleration cards to make them go infinitely faster. We are ready to at least do a craft. Okay, give me 10 stairs. Ta da! Stairs. Something we're probably never going to use. What this co-processing unit does is, without it, the patent provider can only access one molecular assembler. But with a co-processing unit, it can access another one. So this one could access, for instance, that one and that one at the same time, do two crafts at once. If you give it two more co-processing units, it could also access that one and that one at the same time. This one's a little overkill because it acts like four co-processing units at the same time, meaning our little friend here, the patent provider, could access five molecular assemblers, but it's only touching four and I'm happy with that. Let's try something a little bit more useful. Okay, what we have here is kind of all the requirements to make a bronze drill. So let's make a bronze drill. Oh, we need one more recipe of bronze gears. All right, let's see if we can now make some bronze drills. So let's not go crazy and make 16 of them. Everything's good. Start, we'll see it now. It's kind of going through the iterations. Everything was so quick. And without having to go through all the other ingredients of making the pipes and the cables and the, the bolts and the gears and stuff, our system made it for us. Just imagine the possibilities. I realize there's a lot there to take in. Apologies if I explained it poorly, but hopefully it made sense and I didn't make too many mistakes. Please correct me if I did. All right, let's check on that quarry. Uh, looks like it stopped running. And this is how much we got from a stack of 64 drills. It's actually a bit of a fib because I stole two just stacks of iron and two stacks of redstone because I was in desperate need of the materials. All right, let's do the thing. Not as many loot bags as we normally get. That's okay. And a magic epic. Anything interesting? Artifact, some liquid XP. Lovely. That's it. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Thanks so much for sticking around. Next time we're going to make a return over here to our MI base. Tear all this down and get to work on building up a proper factory. And we'll do a big upgrade to our power network. See you then. You're cured.